The movie opens with a commercial from Lunar Industries. At the end of the 21st century, the world is facing an energy crisis, most coal, oil and natural gas reserves are almost exhausted. As a result, the main energy source was shifted over to Helium-3, a resource abundant on Moon. Lunar Industries built the Sarang station on the dark side of the Moon to extract this Helium-3. The scene then changes to the Saling mining base on the Moon's surface. The facility is highly automated and only one person is required to manage operations. As part of the job, the worker put on a space suit and goes out to drive a Land Rover to the Helium-3 mining site. He extracts the Helium-3 in canisters and then sends them back to Earth. The employee's name is Sam Bell, who is assigned for this job with a three-year employment contract. He is almost at the end of his contract period with just two weeks remaining before returning back to Earth. Recent communications problem of satellite congestion have disabled his live feed from Earth. As a result, it has limited him to occasional recorded messages from his wife, Tess, who is pregnant with their daughter, Eve, when he left. We can see how lonely he is as he continues talking to himself. His only companion is an advanced AI robot named Gertie, who helps him with base's automation and provides emotional support. In the next scene, Sam cleans himself. He takes a shower, then Gertie gives him a haircut, during which she asks him if everything is okay. He claimed that he had noticed strange behavior in Sam lately, possibly due to loneliness and depression. Sam raises his concerns and asked when they would repair the lunar satellite, so that he can talk with his family again. In response, Getty told him the company has a low priority on this issue. Even though he only has two weeks left on his contract, he believes the repair is important, because the next person to replace him will have a hard time communicating with the world. Moreover, Sam started to have frequent headaches, so he asked Gertie to give him medicine. The next day, Sam receives a video message from his wife. Without wasting time, he played it immediately. In the message, Tess said that she knew he was feeling very lonely on the moon, but she was proud of what he is doing. Their daughter Eve was also featured in the video that captured Sam's heart. Before ending the video, Tess confesses her love to Sam. We then see Sam spending his free time participating in various activities, crafting a miniature replica of his home city, watering the plants and watching old TV shows. Later, as Sam was fetching a glass of hot water, he experiences a hallucination of a woman seating on his chair. This bothered him and caused him to burn his hand with the hot water. Gertie then put a bandage on his hand and asked what happened. However, Sam chose to hide the truth and pretended to be distracted while watching television. The next morning, Sam woke up and continued his daily routine. While running on the treadmill, he felt some chest pain, but didn't pay much attention to it. After breakfast, Sam puts on his suit and gets into the vehicle to extract more helium-3. While driving, Sam sees the same scene again, causing his rover to crash into a harvester. Seeing a rapid loss of oxygen in the cabin due to the crash, he puts on his helmet, but still falls unconscious in some time. A while later, Sam woke up at the base infirmary with no memory of the crash. Gertie took care of his health and asked Sam to get more rest. Sometime later, Sam overhears Gertie having what appears to be a live chat with Lunar Industry Management. So he tried to walk to the control room, only to discover that he is too weak to talk. But he still asked Gertie who she was talking to. In response, the bot said that, that he was just recording a message. The next day, Sam woke up healthy and walked around the base. A few minutes later he received a message from Lunar Industries stating that they would send a rescue team to repair the mining harvester and will be bringing Sam back. Sam said he could fix the harvester himself instead of waiting in the moon base. However, Gertie does not allow him to do this as he has given strict orders that Sam must be kept at the base until the rescue team arrives. This makes Sam suspicious and led him to make a plan to get out. He opened the vent and cut one of the pipes, allowing the gas to escape into the chamber. He portrays this as a grave issue. Using this ruse, he convinces Gertie to let him leave the base. Sam then boards the other rover and heads towards the previous rover crash site. He opened the hatch and went inside, finding a body inside. Upon closer inspection, he was surprised to see that the body looks just like him. Sam transports his look-like back to base and tends to his injuries. He turns to Gertie for answers about the man's identity and thus unfolding situation. In response, the robot shockingly reveals that this man is also Sam Bell. Soon after, an injured Sam wakes up, only to find that the new Sam is still in the room. He tries to ask Gertie about this, but the robot tells him to rest. Then the injured Sam got up from the bed and saw the other Sam skipping. The injured Sam tries to talk to the fresh Sam. He expressed his gratitude for saving his life and extended his hand to shake, but new Sam ignored him. The two Sams got into an argument and fought over who was real and who was a clone. Later, old Sam goes to talk to Gertie and asks him if he is really a clone. 
Gertie eventually reveals that the two Sams are actually clones. It is also revealed that there was no real crash when the new Sam woke up, as this was standard procedure for all new clones. It turns out that after every three-year contract expires, a new Sam is awakened in the infirmary. Additionally, Tess and Eve's memories were only implanted into the clone of the original Sam Bell. Old Sam was very shocked by this revelation and had emotional breakdown. Gertie tried to comfort him, but he walked away quietly. With only 11 hours until the rescue team arrives, new Sam apologizes to old Sam for hurting him earlier. However, the old Sam plays music loudly in order to ignore him and troll him. New Sam suddenly stopped the music and said that when he woke up, he heard Gertie having a live conversation with Lunar Industries. He claims that the communication satellite is not jammed suggesting that the lunar department is deliberately blocking signals from outside the moon base to prevent them from making contact with Earth. Following this, the two get suited up and drove the rovers outside to search the area. Upon going beyond the facility's perimeter, they split up individually investigate any unusual elements in their surroundings. They each come across different clues. They found substations which have been interfering with the live feed from Earth. Suddenly the old Sam drops to his knees and vomits blood in his helmet. He returned to base because he wasn't feeling well to continue the search. He vomits more blood and realized he lost one of his teeth. Old Sam heads to the mainframe computer base while new Sam continues to investigate. He tries to access the computer database. But when the password fails, Gertie helps him access with the correct credentials. This gives him access to previously cloned archived recordings, revealing a disturbing pattern. It seems like the clone's health get worse at the end of each contract. Finally, they are placed in a chamber where they are told to go into cryogenic sleep before a new Sam is born. Old Sam thinks something is wrong and enters the room to check the cryogenic chamber. He found hollow space in the floorboards and start cutting his way in. By then new Sam had returned to base and found several towers outside. Old Sam reveals him the secret passageway leading to the basement. The two of them then climb downstairs, only to discover hundreds of hibernating clones. This led them to realize that the Lunar Industries is unethically using clones of the original Sam Bell to avoid the expense of training and transporting new astronauts. They also deliberately interfere with lifeboat communication to prevent clones from coming into contact with Earth. The clones believe they would hibernate before returning to Earth at the end of their contract, but are in fact burned and destroyed. Later, Old Sam sets off in a rover with a minicomputer. After passing the jamming radius, he attempted to make a phone call to Tess on Earth. A girl picks up the phone and tells him that Tess died years ago. When he asked the young girl about herself, she introduced herself as Sam and Tess's daughter, Eve. Sam was surprised to learn that his daughter was now 15 years old. Eve then calls out to her dad, who is probably the original Sam. When the old Sam heard this, he hung up the phone in fear. This causes the old clone to break down and he cries, expressing his desire to return home. After calming down, he returned to base and starts showing the same symptoms as the previous clones as their health began to deteriorate. Seeing this, new Sam put him to bed. In the next scene, the two Sams realize that the rescue team will kill them if they are seen together. New Sam convinces Gertie to awaken another clone. He plans to kill the awakened clones and put him in a crashed rover. He will then transport Old Sam to Earth in one of the Helium-3 shipping containers. He also decided to act like he didn't know anything and like he was at the base the whole time. Later, Old Sam wakes up and finds an unconscious clone in the infirmary. After he asked what happened, New Sam explained his plan to him. Old Sam expressed his displeasure that they couldn't kill anyone. He also knew he couldn't stay alive for a long, so he made changes to the plan. He suggests that he be placed back into the crashed rover to die so that Lunar Industries wouldn't suspect anything. He also asked New Sam to return to Earth, leaving the awakened clone at the moon base. Just a few hours before the rescue team arrived, the two Sams put on their suit and headed towards the crash site. They share a moment of their memories and reminisce about how they met Tess, even though neither of them had actually met her. Soon after, Old Sam falls asleep and New Sam carries him back to the crashed rover. They said goodbye to each other and New Sam returned with tears in his eyes. Back at the moon base, New Sam makes preparations to leave in a Helium-3 container. At this point, Gertie states that the plan will not work as he has recorded everything since he woke up in the infirmary. This recording will reveal the interaction of the two clones and their plans to the Lunar Industries. The robot tells New Sam to erase his memory before leaving. New Sam thanks Gertie and says goodbye before rebooting him. Minutes before the rescue team arrives, New Sam remembers something. He hurried back to the control room and reprogram a rover to crash and destroy the jamming antenna, allowing communication with Earth. Additionally, he carries a helium-3 canister to fund himself once he reaches Earth. He entered the container and flew away before rescuers arrived. 
the older Sam stayed conscious long enough to watch new Sam leave. The rescue team is fooled as they discover the newly created clone in the hospital and the old Sam's body in the crashed vehicle. In the final scene, we hear the news reports, which describe Sam's testimony about Lunar Industries' unethical activities and how they sparked a major controversy, and as a consequence, this led to a sharp decline in their stock. Subscribe for more videos like this and turn on notifications to help the channel. Thank you for watching till the end.